for the second upload of the day, we have this cute little integral from 0 to 1 of negative 1 to the log x. So how exactly do we approach this problem? Well, first up, let's call the integral i for reference purposes. And let's invoke complex numbers. We know Euler's beautiful equation, right? We know that e to the i pi plus 1 equals 0, and this implies that e to the i pi equals negative 1. So this implies that we can write i as the integral from 0 to 1 of e to the i pi times log x dx. And how exactly does this help our cause? Well, recall the definition of the complex power function, the principal branch of the complex power function, that is, a to the z, where a is some non-zero complex number, equals e to the a times log z, where log z is the principal logarithm. So comparing the structure here with the structure of our integrand, this implies that e to the i pi log x equals x to the i times pi. Okay, cool. That means our integral i sorts out to the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the i times pi dx, which is, of course, a pretty simple integration to carry out. So this sorts out to x to the i pi plus 1 divided by i pi plus 1 with the limits being 0 and 1. So in the limit as x approaches 1, you just get a 1, and as x approaches 0, you get a 0. So you have the reciprocal of a 1 plus i times pi. And it'll be nice to separate this result into real and imaginary parts. So for that, we invoke the conjugate. So we have to expand by 1 minus i pi. Okay, cool. So in the numerator, you have 1 minus i times pi divided by 1 minus i squared pi squared. And i squared is just negative 1, so you finally have 1 minus pi divided by 1 plus pi squared. So our, oh, forgot the imaginary unit here. Sorry about that. So our integral has a solution in the complex realm, which isn't exactly surprising looking at its structure. You're raising negative 1 to the log x, and you're integrating from 0 to 1. So yeah, it's not surprising that you have complex answers, but it's nice that the complex answers look kind of cool. So the real part of this integral is 1 by 1 plus pi squared, and the imaginary part of this integral looks even better. It's negative pi divided by 1 plus pi squared. And similarly, we can expect cool results for another integral. Let's say we integrate from 0 to 1 i to the log x, and this looks cool once again. So using Euler's formula, we know that e to the i x equals cosine x plus i times sine x. So if you want just i on the right-hand side, this implies that you have to plug in x equal to pi by 2. So this implies that i equals the integral from 0 to 1 of e to the i pi by 2 times log x dx. And again, using a correspondence with the complex power function, we get the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the i pi by 2, which is again pretty simple to evaluate. On integration, you have x to the i pi by 2 plus 1 divided by i pi by 2 plus 1 with the limits being 0 and 1. So evaluating the limits and expanding using 2, we have 2 divided by i times pi plus 2. And again, it would be nice if we separate this into real and imaginary parts. So using the conjugate, 2 minus i pi, 2 minus i pi, we can write this as 4 minus 2 times i pi divided by 4 uh, minus i squared pi squared, which is, of course, just 4 plus pi squared. Okay, cool. So that means the real part of the integral from 0 to 1 of i to the log x dx equals 4 divided by 4 plus pi squared. Again, pretty nice in terms of looks. And the imaginary part of the exact same integral equals negative 2 pi divided by 4 plus pi squared, which again looks even better than the real part. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. This was a pretty cool math snack. Thank you. See you next time.